Hey everybody, this is FL Studio How To, and uh, today I just decided to give you just a basic overview and uh, tutorial for uh, the entire plugin for Native Instruments Massive. Um, so basically, I'll be showing you the well, learning the basics to creating your own synths to uh, the specific sound you want to get from them. And yeah, I'll show you all the cool little effects you can add and all that fun stuff. Okay, so basically when you open up Massive, um, it starts off with a preset. So whenever you are making a sound, you want to hit File, New Sound, and you can see everything resets then. Um, and what you do to start off your uh, synth is you go into your first oscillator here, and you can choose from uh, various presets for uh, the synth that you want. There's basic, analog, digital, and chords. Um, so if you want, it depends on what kind of a so uh, sound you want. If you want more of a saw, I, I would recommend these over here. Um, a lot of for the heavier stuff is in the second uh, like uh, zone here, and in the third one, it's more um, light stuff. And you know, I've never really used uh, the FX in chords, but um, to start off today, I'm just going to be making a regular synth with you. Um, so we'll go with uh, smooth square. So once you choose that, um, you can hear what it sounds like by pressing on your keyboard or MIDI controller. I'll bring the volume down here. Um, and once you pick your preset, which they're all in here, um, you can choose if you want it bend plus, uh, formant bend minus, and bend minus and plus. Um, now usually you want spectrum to get the regular sound that comes with the preset. But say you want it really high pitched, you would change it to a formant, and you can hear it goes up very high. And a lot of times, formants are good for uh, effects or additives in um, like dubstep or electro. Um, but for this purpose, we're going to stick to spectrum. And the next thing uh, that you'll want to do is to get the uh, the pitch of your synth. And right now, you can hear um, it's leveled out at zero. Um, and I am going to pitch this one at zero just to start off. And now you can move the WT position uh, to get a different sound um, from each of the presets. And in this one particularly, it uh, will dampen the sound when you get lower. And it will open up the synth when you get it higher, as you can hear here. So I'm going to keep the WT position all the way up. And then intensity and amp, we start messing with when we um, open up the second and third oscillators. Um, and then this right here on the side uh, toggles which um, effect or filter your oscillator will go to. For example, I could put a um, filter in either one of these, and right now it's uh, even between the two. And I could make this oscillator go just to the first filter, or I can make it right in between. Uh, which is the stock thing for Massive. Alright, and the next thing um, to octave your synth, you can open up the second oscillator, and I'll go ahead and just pick a random one. We'll try sine harmonic 1. And you can uh, undo the oscillator one just to hear what this sounds like. And uh, I like that sound right there with... Um, um, and we'll add it with the first oscillator to see what it sounds like together. And now is where you start adjusting the intensity to see how much you want to blend these two together. Um, when the intensity is all the way up, it'll be uh, generally overpowering in the oscillator with the intensity all the way up. And when you bring the amp and intensity down, it uh, blends the sounds more together. Um, so I'm just going to mess with these right here. And now what we're going to do, just to give this uh, synth a little bit of bass, we're going to bring the pitch down to negative 12. And now with that deeper uh, bass behind it, I think I'm going to go ahead and change this first oscillator into square saw 1 back to the default.
Uh, and that sounds pretty good for now. And of course, um, once you open up these other oscillators, you can go back and change them to get your desired sound. Like I'll go ahead and try a, uh, we'll try electric. Or how about a drive? All right. Uh, so there you have it. And generally, when you uh, pitch down a second oscillator, it's it doesn't sound as good when you octave them in your piano roll. So if you want to be able to octave them, uh, when you put them into piano roll, I would keep the pitches at zero. Um, but if you're keeping these as solid notes, I would um, pitch the second oscillator down to the first one or whatever you want to do there. Um, then we'll just leave the third oscillator how it is. And now we go and move on to our filters here. And there's a few different filters you can use. Um, and generally the low and high pass filters um, both are very good for fading in the cutoff. Um, I'll show you what I mean here. So I'll add on a high pass for it. And as I hit uh, a key on my MIDI controller, um, you can hear that the cutoff is faded in with this filter here. Um, and that's great for, well, fading in your synth. Um, when you get it into the track. So when I have it down here you can hardly hear it and it fades in. And uh, what you can do and if you're in FL Studio the way you can um, automate this is you click this down arrow click make editor thumbnail and open up your fruity wrapper for massive and then you can scroll down and when you uh, right click on the knob you wanna control um, you can see here it says filter one undercore cut PRM one and then I can go over here and find it which it's right there I click on it right click and then create automation clip um, but we're not gonna worry about that too much right now um, I'll actually X this out right now go into the main thing here um, so that's how you can add a filter there's also other ones where like scream is better for um, dubstep or drum and bass or something very heavy You can see how it gives it kind of a Skrillexy feel. Um, when it's down here, then you can just hear the bass, and it's very heavy. Um, so when I bring the cutoff up to here and then scream up, um, yeah, and you can adjust adjust these to get uh, whatever synth you want. You can uh, mess around with these presets here and then, or the filters here, and adjust the resonance and whatever one's in the middle and the cutoff. Um, and so, for example, if I want my drive one and oscillator one to just go to filter one, I pull this up here. You can hear that difference. Um, but I'll bring it about halfway. So, um, this will matter more when you add in a second uh, filter here. And I'll go high pass four. And that allows you to fade in one while the other is full blast. Um, but I'll turn off filter two for now and center this out for the sake of the tutorial. Um, and now once we do that, um, I'm going to show you all how to make... Um, well, this is um, basically to... Create your synth here. Um, you go into the fourth envelope, and this is how. Um, well, this is the path of the synth. Um, and for this one exactly, it goes straight up, and it's just a solid synth. And right here is where it ends, and you can see it ends pretty abruptly. Um, for example, if I take my level down, it'll fade in the synth more like this. If you could hear that, and I can lengthen my attack so it sounds more like. And when I bring it down and bring the level up, the synth will start off right when I hit the key. So that's how you do that. If I want it to completely fade in, I can bring this level down and then uh, bring this level down. Um, so I'm going to bring it all the way back up though. And then the decay is how long it'll last um, or how long it'll... Uh, reverb after the synth 
And then right down here you have your release, and that's how long it'll take to release the synth. See, when I bring that all the way up, I'll hit the key, and then I'll let go, and I'll tell you when I let go. So I'll hit in the key, and I let go right there, and you can hear the synth keeps going. And that's with the release. You can lengthen that or shorten it. You can see now it kind of has a uh, delay afterwards. And that's how you get that. But I'm going to bring this mostly down. Right about there. And then I'm going to just bring the attack all the way up. Um, so that's the fourth envelope there. And you, what you can do is apply these envelopes to certain things. Like, for example, if I go into envelope 1 and I bring this level all the way down here, I can click on these arrows and apply this to the cutoff and it drag it down. And that will affect, you can see the knob here, it will bring it all the way over there. And what that does is it follows the path of this envelope. So you can see it goes up and then it levels off so it will... You can hear when I hit the MIDI controller, I'll show you, it'll follow the path. And then it goes off. And you can uh, adjust this however much you want. If I bring this uh, all the way up, then it'll uh, bring the cutoff down. So if I, uh, I can adjust by clicking on this number and dragging. And this is how fast it'll level off with the um, amount that I chose up here, if that makes sense. So, for example, if I hit the key, you can hear it levels off quickly. Now, if I bring this up, listen, then it stays up here. It'll stay um, where the end of our um, application of envelope 1 ends. So, basically, this top up here is where the synth levels off um, and you can affect or change that by doing this so for example this when I hit the key this will travel up and then it'll travel back down to where that is which is about halfway here so if I bring it all the way down it'll open completely back up alright and uh, I'll bring the attack so it goes right away there um, and the next thing here is I'm going to go into my fifth LFO, and this is how you can uh, affect wobbles and whatnot in your synth. And if you want it to vibrate, uh, you can do that in here as well. There's other ways, but this is one of the easiest. Um, so what you do here is you drag this square on here again, and when you would pull that up, this will wobble according to here and the rate. And what I like to do is click sync so it stays on beat. And if I bring it to 8, it'll wobble um, every 1 eighth of a, me of a measure. So you can hear that right there. This is taking this cutoff and bringing it all the way back and all the way forward 8 times every measure. And you can adjust the amount by clicking and dragging on this number. And you can apply these to many things like the scream as well. And the resonance if you want, I guess. And uh, that's pretty much how the LFOs work. And you can make it uh, so it's a smooth wobble or if it's kind of a grindy wobble or a square or triangular. Um, and you can always adjust these so the wobble is a little bit off, um, offbeat. Um, and also, if you click unsync, you can make it. You can give it a nice little vibration there. So that controls the rate at which uh, this cutoff and scream and resonance is automated up and down. Um, and so the next thing we're going to go into is the effects. And now I'll just add a little bit of reverb to this. And what the dry and wet means is basically. Uh, the overall amount of uh, well the best way I can explain it is dry is more of getting out of a cave but wet is the deeper you go into the cave um, is how the reverb, reverb is going to be affected um, so if I bring this to the dry side and I can bring the size up and this is how much um, it will echo 
off of the amount of dry or wetness. So for example, you can listen here without. And you can see how it levels off there. And that sounds pretty cool. You could use this synth as some kind of an opener. Um, but uh, I'm going to go into my effects too then and add a classic tube distortion. Which, uh, where is it here? Ah, oh, screw that. Um, I will add, let's see here, Dimension Expander and bring it to the dry side. And what this will do is it will expand the area around um, at which you're playing it. So if you're listening through headphones, it will widen out the sound a bunch. Um, so that's uh, the effects right there. You can also automate the effects um, with these LFOs, and there's four of them. Um, but once you're done with that, you can go in and control your white noise, which hopefully you know what white noise is. Um, it's the sound your TV gives off when you lose cable. Um, but you can change the amount of white noise in the like presets for the white noise in there. But I'm not going to deal with that because it'll sound bad with this synth. And the last thing, you can insert little uh, mini uh, plug-in things in here, um, is what I call them, I guess. And if you add a bit crusher, it will give it more of a tinny sound, um, like this. As you can hear right there. Awesome, this is actually a pretty cool wobble. If I go into my sink... Awesome. All right, and um, up here you have your basic controls like the volume. As you can see, it's, it's at a good volume. Uh, sometimes people make them overpowering, and if it's overpowering, it'll get up into the red here, and you don't want it to hit the red because that'll interfere with your other uh, synths. But uh, I think that is the basics of Native Instruments Massive. Um, so if you like this tutorial, be sure to drop a comment below and give me a like. Uh, be sure to subscribe for more. Um, also, I'll throw this preset as a download in the description so you can work off of this with me. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching and subscribe for more.